And just a reminder, we've got some good upcoming sessions. We have a little bit of a break, but then on May 5th, Joe Shingen is going to be doing a session on tech tools, a variety of different tech tools. And in that session, then we'll get to choose what tools we'll look at more in depth in those following weeks in May. So I'm um, a great opportunity to learn about some really neat things for a variety of different areas, including English language arts, math, and different areas too. We're always, we continue to do these office hours just to make sure that we're sharing resources across the, across the region. And we wanted to, in alignment with adult learning, kind of loop back on this one because we had Stacia do a session earlier on Boom Cards. So we wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity to ask questions and some other features in it. So that's why we're doing that. We always think of assistive technology through the set framework um, and that's something that the students the environments, the tasks, and the tools. Um, and we use that lens of equity to make sure that every student is getting exactly what it is that they need. Today, we'll just have some sharing by Stacia today, um, questions and answers. And then at the end in the slides, there are a couple additional resources and a wrap up. Um, if we have time, we'll get to that. And so I would like to introduce Stacia. I have a link there to the YouTube video from when she did her session, which was, seems like yesterday, but was back in February. Um, and she's an SLP at Moose Lake Community School. And so I will turn it over to Stacia here. All right. Thank you, Julie. And thank you guys for joining me today. Um, like Julie said, I did a presentation on boom cards back in February and we kind of ran out of time. So I really skimmed over um, how to make boom cards. So, so today we can talk more about making boom cards and I'll just go through the process with you. And if you have any other questions, you know, towards the end, we should have more time if there's questions or review on other things as well. So, and if you have any questions um, during the presentation, feel free to just raise your hand, interrupt, we can just be informal that way. So, um, so I'm going to present my screen here. Right. All right, do you guys see that? Yep, looks great. Perfect. So I just wanted to start on this page just as a review of um, the subscription options, because when I go into the studio where we create boom cards, um, if you're on the free version, like I am, you can only make five decks. Um, and then if you go to the basic, still only five. And once you get to power the $25 a year and up, that's when you have the infinite amount of decks that you could create. So I, like I had said in my last presentation, I haven't made that many of my own decks because there's so many out there that are just free and already made. So I don't have to create anything. But it is kind of fun like to be able to get used to how to make things if you really need a specific activity or you have something in mind and you just can't find it out there. Um, so like I said before, too, you can do so much with the free version um, that I you can see mine's expired. I still am on the free. But um, for $35 a year, I feel like you'd be getting a lot of resources and that option to make more decks and even sell on the marketplace if you want to, if you're really good at making things. So, um, so up top here, last time we spent more time in classes, library, the reports, and the store. So today we're going to spend more time in the studio. So I'm going to click on there, and this is what it will look like. Um, again, you have to have a subscription. Even if it's free, you sign up with a username and password in order to have an account. So that would be your first step. Um, but then if you go down, if you want to make decks, you go to this make decks option. And up here, you can just create a new deck. Oh, and look at that. See, I, um, I'm already past my or up to my five decks. So I'm just going to say, OK, <laughs> but otherwise it would start a new one for you. I'm going to go into one of my untitled decks here that are just blank anyway. And this is what it's going to look like. And at first, when I went in here, I was like, oh, you know, it, it's kind of daunting at first. Like, who? there's a left side, a right side. I don't know what all this means. But once you start playing with it, you'll find that it is pretty user friendly. Um, so the first thing I wanted to tell you about is this template card. 
If you choose to use the template card and put something on the background, for example, it's going to put it on every card after that. So if you want your whole deck of cards to have that exact same background, then go ahead and use that template card. But if not, if you wanna have different backgrounds, then skip that template card and just go right to card number one. See how it kind of outlined in red? So let's say I'm going to, I want a template card um, and I want my, I want the same background on every card, okay? So what I've been doing, and I had mentioned this in the last presentation, is the cards that I've made, I only make for myself. So I take pictures off of Google Images. And um, if I were to sell cards, then I would really look at that differently because you don't want copyright laws and everything, um, any issues with that. But I just go to Google Images. So I'm going to click another window here. Can you guys still see that? Yep, yep, we can still okay, see. Perfect, just making sure. And let's say I want um, the background of... I, last time I did farm, so I have that in my brain, but let's do spring background. So I'm just gonna type in a spring background and some images and find a spring background. So I, this one's kind of cute. So I'll um, save that image. You can see my other ones there. I'm gonna save it to my desktop so it's easy to find. Spring background. Right. Then I'm going to go back to my boom cards. And I if I go to background images down here, I can click on that and upload. So I'm going to upload. And then there you see my spring background. And it processes and there it is. So I can just click on it and it will automatically put it in my background, which is really nice. And this one I see is a little blurry, but you can play with um, the images, and of course, some are clearer than others on Google. So now every card I add, if I press add card, add card, it's going to have that background. So if I didn't want that again, just skip that template card. So let's say I go to my card number one, and I'm just going to show you guys each of these um, options on the left, and I'll kind of bring in the options from the right too as we go. So I always think drag and drop drag and drop because sometimes the first time I did this I was like clicking and nothing was happening so for the text if you want text somewhere you just drag and drop and it will put a box there and then you can edit that text however you want you can make it big or smaller um put uh butterflies right so um the just a typical text box there and then what you can do within that text box, you can change colors and do all those different things that you would in like a Google document or a Word document. So that's the text box. Um, if I get rid of that text box, I just can click on it and delete or click and um, delete over here as well. Another one, if I want multiple buttons, so then that's this button option. Again, drag and drop and you will get a button. And again, you can move it around. You can change the color of it or the border of it. See how it's still selected. If I come over to this side, if I do the plus for border, I can increase the width of it, um, the radius of it. You could kind of click and you see how it changes. The color around, I could make it red. Um, so lots of options. Background, I could change to yellow if I wanted. So depending on how much you want to change things up, you really have quite a few options. Um, you can even um, change the size of the button, but I find it's easier just to drag to the size that you want. Um, with that button too, let's say you're going to want like more than one of them. So if it's um, selected here, you can do duplicate duplicate and do as many as you want and they'll be that same size um, and the same color if you want so you could change those colors and all of that if you wanted to or if you decided i don't want this one anymore go ahead and delete it um, but another thing you can do with that if you click on the button is um, 
you can determine if it's a correct answer or an incorrect answer just by clicking and kind of coding it that way. So let's say I should really um, set something up here. So I'm going to do a text again. And let's say my question was, uh, what is something you see in the spring? And I'm just randomly coming up with something. <laughs> and I want some options for my kids here. I'm going to say a butterfly. I need to be a little bigger there. Or I might say, of course, you can see all kinds of things in the spring, but um, I was going to say snow, but you can see snow in the spring. So wh why don't I do a snowmobile? Technically, I know you could see that in the spring, but you guys get my gist. <laughs> so I'm going to say butterfly is the right answer. So when I'm clicked on there, I'm going to say that's the correct answer. And snowmobile is going to be coded as the incorrect answer. All right. So, and then while you're creating, you can always go up to this pre preview button just to see how it's going to look, how it's going to work, and see if it works. So if I click on that, what is something I see in the spring? Hmm, if I click butterfly, oh, it's not working. So I know I did something wrong. See, snowmobile, it told me, nope, that's wrong. The butterfly's not working. So I'm going to go back and see what I did wrong with that one. Okay, it looks like it didn't hold the correct there. Okay. So if I preview again, that time it worked. So that's what's nice about the preview button. Like, is it going to work the way you intend it to? And you can do that anytime throughout. So I've set up a text box. I've set up some buttons and I made one correct and one incorrect. Let's say I want to add an image now. So again, drag and drop, and it automatically opens the images that I have. And most of these are, like I said, off Google Images. So I would have to go to Google and find a butterfly or um, a butterfly in a snowmobile. So I'm going to go and find a picture of a butterfly. Well, oh, there's so many good ones, and just... Save that image to my desktop again. Go back into Boom Cards. Go to uh, Background Image. I'm going to upload and put that butterfly in my library. So it's in my library now. So now I'm going to go out and I'm going to change. I can again change the size of this image. And if I click on it, then I can put my butterfly in there. Okay. So, and um, I could do the same for snowmobile, but I'm just going to do the butterfly for now, just for the sake of time. Another thing I wanted to tell you about images, when you are, there are free images within um, within Boom Cards. So if I go out of this quickly to show you that, you can go to store and you can type or click on images right here at the top and search for something that you want. So I will search for a snowmobile because I need a picture of a snowmobile. And there's no results. So let's see if they have a butterfly. They do have butterflies and then I like free so I go from low to high. And there's even free butterflies. So these free ones, you can, and you'll see there's other things too, flowers and whatever you search, there's a lot of free images too. But if I want this one, I'm going to say I'm going to buy it now, even though it's free and I'm buying it for zero points, it's going to automatically go into my library in the studio. So if I go back to the studio and back to my decks, back into that one that we were creating things. Okay, let's say I want to change this butterfly out now. I want something different there. 
my purchase. I have to go under my purchased, and then you'll see that butterfly. Even though it was free, it's still considered purchased. Okay, and then it moves that in there. So the only thing I would do if you're planning to sell the deck is I've seen people give credit for those images. Even if they were free, they would say thank you to um, Peachy Speech or whoever um, offered those images. So we've done a text box, we've done buttons, we've done some images. The next thing is a caption pick, in which technically I could have used this for butterfly or the snowmobile. If I drag and drop, what it is, it's just a picture with a caption. So I um, did the butterfly button and then the picture of the butterfly. If I want them together, I can change the caption at the bottom and write in butterfly. And I can click and put my butterfly in that way as well. And with this, you can also have them correct or incorrect. So if somebody clicks on it, it's going to give them a correct or an incorrect answer. So um, I know I'm not making sense right here, <laughs> but if I preview, I want to make sure this, I click on this butterfly and I get a correct response. And I do. Okay. So we go back again. I'm just going to get rid of some things just for the sake of, well, you know what? Maybe I'll just go on to another page here, okay? So we're at the fraction now. This just gives, if you're wanting to do math things, you can drag and drop a fraction in and do different math cards using fractions. I don't use that one that much or I haven't, I guess, that much. Um, in speech, I wouldn't have much use for that, I guess. <laughs> um, multiple choice options. I have used this one on one of my decks. Oops, I'm going to delete this quick. Looks like I have to delete each part of it. <laughs> multiple choice, again, drag and drop. You have four different options. So if I had a text and I wanted to ask a question, um, how many legs does a starfish have? <laughs> Very random. I put that up there. I might play with the coloring, the font, and all that a little more. But then I can type in answers. And I can say which ones are correct or incorrect. So on six, I'm going to go up and do wrong. That's a wrong one when they click on it. I'm going to do five, and I'm going to make that one correct. Okay. Ten, and that one's already wrong. And one, wrong already. And if I want to preview just to make sure it makes sense, hmm, how many legs does a starfish have? If I do one, Oh, it's not working again, so I know something didn't work with that. I see that 10 and 6 are lighting up, though. See 10? Nope. Whoops, that's wrong. If I click on 5, correct. It has 5 legs. So if I go back and see what went wrong with 1, oh, they mix it up. Oh, it just didn't code. So I just have to click that. That is wrong. So again, that's nice to see, have that preview to make sure it's working the way you want it to. So that's the multiple choice option, multiple pictures. I'm going to go into a new card here is drag and drop again. The same thing, but with pictures. So if I wanted um, a picture of something instead, then I could do that. So if I do a text, and say, what is this? And let's say I want an image too. I'm going to drag and drop that image and I'm going to go to uh, my images. I'm just going to put that dog in there and I'll adjust him. Let's say I wanted them to match it, okay, which might be easy, but you click on each of these then, double click, and it will open 
your picture. So I'm going to code this one as correct. That's already coded as correct. Let's say I'll put smiley face in that next one, and that's already coded as wrong. I'll do an apple in this one, and again, that's already coded as wrong. And I'll do pudding, and it's coded as wrong. So if I want it to match, I'm going to preview, make sure it works again. Hmm. And I like how they mix it up. The dog, I matched the dog. It was correct. <laughs> so again, really easy, but just to give you guys an idea of how it works. Um, so that was multiple pictures. Now this next one is fill in the blank. And if I drag and drop that in, this just gives them a window to actually type into and you put the answer there. So let's say you are doing maybe a math problem or something where you just want them to label something or you come up with something really creative and they have to type it in. Um, I'm just gonna do something really simple. <laughs> what is five, or no, I have to put my answer here, I'm sorry. I'm gonna put seven and submit that. So when they type in seven, they're going to get a correct answer. You see it right now, but they won't see it. And let's say my text is, what is five plus two? Okay. Now, when I preview it, it's just an empty box. So they can type in, seven and then submit and it shows that they're correct so whatever you write in there or put in there that's what um they they have to or that will be the correct answer so that's the fill in the blank sound um you can put sounds in i don't have uh all accounts can play sound but sound creator requires a higher membership so i have the free version so, of course, we can hear the sound, it can play the sound, but I can't create anything with sound unless I pay for a higher membership. And then video is kind of a fun one where you can drag and drop and you can type in a YouTube video, just cut and paste a YouTube video in, and then they click on that card and it will bring them right to a video. So let's say you're doing a phonics lesson and you have a whole boom deck created for phonics or rhyming. If there's a nice um, YouTube video or another link to a video on phonics that you want to start out with or end with, you can just type it right in and they can press play and watch it right within the boom deck. So that's really nice. Um, so I think I've gone through all of the options on the left here. Um, it hasn't been really pretty, but it gives you an idea of how everything works. And what I like to say, too, about creating is I've gotten a couple ideas just from other decks that I've seen. So I've seen some decks and I've thought, oh, that's really cool the way they set that up, but I don't want this part of it. Or I would add this. That's where you can get ideas from other decks, but then go and create your own for your specific needs and your students. Um, so I think I've gone over most of the things here. Have you guys, um, do you guys have any questions as of right now? Or um, otherwise I can show you just a couple of the decks that I did make. I did show these um, or parts of them on my last session as well. Any questions just yet? Even if it's not about um, the studio, I can go back to and talk about classes, library, the reports, the store too, if you have any questions. I have a quick question, Stacia. Yeah. Um, so I know you you talked about how different accounts limit the number of decks that you might be able to develop, but is there any limit to the number of cards within each deck? You know, that's a good question. I, not that I know of, um, okay. not that I know of, but I could be wrong. Um, I no, know that. Within my library, I know I have some decks that are that I didn't create that are like 30 plus cards. Okay, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I I my quick answer would be I don't think so. But okay. I think you can definitely have the necessary amount. Because I feel like, wow, 40 cards or 30 some cards. Um, at that point, maybe you would just create another deck, you know? Sure. Yeah. I, I guess I don't know that exact answer. That's a good question. 
that I think that answers it as well as I needed answered. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to look at my notes here just to make sure I showed you guys everything too. Um, oh, there is another thing I wanted to show you. Um, if you, let's say you created a deck. So I'm going to go into my um, Ocean Rhymes here. And this again is just a simple one. I used a text. And I did use the template card, so it put the background and everything. I used the text box, and then I used the um, multiple choice options. And then I just inserted a new picture. Which one rhymes with fish, dish, you know? And it keeps going through. Um, I'm not in preview right now. That's not why it's not working. But let's say I want that same format, but I'm gonna, I am gonna want to change it up. Instead of ocean background, I want farm or I'm doing themes or something. And I know I want that same format, but I don't want the exact deck. You can clone the deck and it probably won't let me do it because I'm already at five. If you want to clone the template card or the whole, de the whole deck I wanna clone. And yep, it says, please upgrade your membership because I'm at my five but you can clone it and it will give you another copy of it that gives you like the bones of it. And then you can delete what you want and add in the new things you want. But the bones of it are still there for you, which will save you time, if that makes sense. Um, so that's kind of a nice option. And then another thing I wanted to mention is that you can, if you're within a deck, let's say you have, I'm gonna go into, our one, I'm going to add a card. And let's say you have something created at Google Slides or PowerPoint that you feel like, oh, it'd be really nice to house that in my boom cards or to house it in the same spot. You can go ahead and import that into a boom card. And I can show you how to do that here. Um, if I go into my slow, um, Yes, my slides. I'm going to go to Google Slides. And I'm going to pick something from my Google Slides. I'm going to pick my, I'm going to do my reticulated glass frog. <laughs> and they're highlighted R's. Can you guys think of what sound we were working on, right? <laughs> but then what I can do, let's say I wanted this deck in there. I would start on this picture and I'd go to File and Download to a JPEG image, okay? And I see it goes down here, it's downloaded. And if I go back to my boom cards, I can go to my background image again, and I'm gonna go to upload, just like I'm putting in a picture or a background. And I have to go to my downloads, and there's my reticulated glass frog, and I'm gonna open it, and then there it is. So then I can just click on it, and there it is within my slide. So if I wanted all of it, I'd have to go one slide at a time, download it and, and put it in. Um, but it's kind of nice to have it in this, this format too. And then um, it's in a boom deck so the kids can just go to the next one. And um, you might say, why not just do it in Google Slides, which you could do it in Google Slides too. But it's kind of nice to have it in this format too, if that's what you're using, or if there's just part of it that you want within a boom activity. Um, and you can do it with PowerPoint as well. But of course, um, we run off of Google here. So, so that's how you do the Google slide. <laughs> um, super slick trick. I like that yeah. one. Yeah, so like in another, um, you know, there's there's people that I know create a lot of things, maybe social stories. I, I use Google Slides for social stories. And sometimes it would be nice just to have it in a um, boom deck because they have that, that next button or skip buttons. You know, just the format of it is kind of neat. So yeah. that's cool. another. Um, I know it's about 1230 now, so I want to make sure that um, I know I jumped in with a question, but I want to make sure that we um, take a minute to see if anyone else had any questions um, as we wrap things up here. Here I am going over again, right? You always have such good information, Stacia. It's <laughs> great. And if there aren't any questions, um, thanks okay. everyone for coming. I can stop recording, but um, we will make sure that we 